It was cold. The dense layer of snow made it hard to move, and the wind, the wind was relentless. Standing still was almost impossible. A large Iceni army was about to scale our walls with three reinforced ladders and a large battering ram moved towards our gate. But Sola, the leader of the defense, was prepared. With legionaries on the walls and the gate blocked, he just waited for them to approach. Jupiter had to guide them through this hell. With the gates breached, they stormed towards the city, many over the walls, but even more through the gates. They were pushing us back to our barriers, leaving us little ground to maneuver. Some of them even reached the ground from the walls itself. Sola had to deploy his veterans. The Lucanian hoplites were holding firm at the gates, while the veterans drove the enemy back to the walls. They pursued. With the walls captured, the remaining Iceni were stuck in the gate where they were encircled by our Lucanians and our cavalry. Without the ability to keep fighting, they withdrew. The battle was ours. With our victory over the Iceni, Sola and Legio V were greatly wounded. The men were completely battered and it would take time for the reinforcements from Italy to arrive. But in times of war, Mars wouldn't allow rest. Therefore Salinator, who were on his way to lifting the siege, hunted down the routing Iceni forces. They were completely defeated, meaning we had a bit more leeway over the region. 
Sulla and Salonator therefore would burn down the nearby Icenia villages to gain complete control. This might have been a bad move as these tribes weren't even from the Iceni. These people were Gauls, the ones we were trying to save. But who knows, maybe they were actually Iceni warriors in disguise. And Sola, he would never take such a risk. At this point, Senator Devon arrived at the military camp, telling us the Republic have decided that we need to push the Iceni out of mainland Europe as a beaten dog left on the mainland is bound to bite back. He also mentioned Selenator needed to protect the Lugos border while we were at war with the Iceni, and so it would be. Selenator marched his legion back to the Alps where he would stay for the rest of this campaign. And as soon as the reinforcements from Italy arrived, Sulla pushed out into Belgae territory. But Sola wasn't alone in his expedition north. Pera, who seized Bibracti a year earlier, were on his way too. However, he had his hindrances to deal with. As he was pushing for Cenobom, he got attacked in the middle of a crossing. His Gallic allies dealt with the Brits rather easily. But it was just an obstacle as they tried to distract us while another army snuck past our guards and sacked Bribacti again. With an enemy army in behind our lines, Pera called for Megalus to support him from the south. Yet he was actually not needed as Pera caught up with the enemy and secured Central Gaul. With this, he joined Sola in his journey to the Belgae frontiers. But on his way, he got intercepted by an elite Iceni army. They quickly fell, giving them passage to their last big stronghold in the region. And together with Sola, they conquered Atuatuka. Central and Eastern Gaul has been secured. Now we only needed to seize the West. And the ambitious youngest son of Lucinius, Busus, was in command here. He wanted to become the sole heir to the family riches. And with Salinator gaining plenty of glory to the east against the Iceni and Lugos tribes, Busus needed to show off his tactical ability. Especially because Lucinius was nearing 80 years of age meaning he won't be part of this world for much longer. To show off his skills, he initially formed up in a double rank formation with his veterans and Iberian forces in the back. But then he changed to a wedge formation where they would be able to push all their forces through their weak center. Here the veterans would act as the main firepower instead of just keeping them in reserve.
with a heroic victory in what initially was predicted by the gods to be a defeat. He managed to prove to Licinius that Fusus should be the heir, undoubtedly annoying Selenator. But that is for another time, as the war isn't finished yet. Megalos, who previously were recalled to Pribacti, now were in a great position to go for Cenabum, while Fusus travelled out to Namnetum. The former were the first to fall, while the latter didn't even make any resistance. This only left one port in Gaul still under Iceni occupation. Megalus defeated them during a snowy night and joyous about the liberation of the town. Some of the Gauls were willing to join the weakened army until it was fully replenished. And it turned out to be just in time as two large navies made a counterattack. But we didn't know Neptune's influence was all the way up here, as he denied the Iceni to land all their forces and keeping them at sea instead. After defeating the Iceni this many times, they finally surrendered, giving up most of their freedom and were forced to make regular tribute for the rest of their silly lives. I fear I betray my people by agreeing, but I have no army of words to oppose it. With one enemy out of the war, the Odrician kingdom decided to follow suit by doing the same exact thing, giving up complete influence over Thrace. Sola also made an agreement with the Kimbra's tribe on the other side of the Rhine to protect our border against any Germanic aggression. And to end off the diplomacy, Egypt, who obviously realized most of our forces now were in a position to expand south again, decided to bribe us into a peace treaty and trade. But Rome never forgets a hostile enemy and could always attack when they least expected. Three years later and Gaul is now fully integrated into Roman society, with only Megalus and Pera as garrisons. Sulla was on his way back to Italy with his new legion based on auxiliaries from different Gallic tribes who wanted to show their gratitude to us through service. But it was not just him. Three more armies were already in Italy, fully formed, while Lucinius and Papus both have done the same. Even new ships were being built preparing for the Republic to take the Mediterranean throne by storm. But who should the wrath of Neptune be unleashed upon? Carthage have survived in this world only because we have allowed them to. The Anatolians are now within reach as Thrace have come under Roman control. Or even Egypt, because Rome never forgets. The choice is for the Senate to decide.